Hi, folks. This is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And um, this past uh, couple of weeks, I was uh, doing a uh, another symposium called Low Carb All Stars, and I was invited to speak on this by uh, Paul Mason. Um, and one of the speakers that I happened to be in a discussion with was a guy called Richard Bernstein. And for those of you that don't know Dr. Bernstein, he's kind of the uh, Bob Adkins of the diabetes world. Uh, he's a type 1 diabetic and um, created for himself and then for the world a paradigm moving away from glycemic index and using a low carbohydrate lifestyle together with insulin dosing to keep his blood sugars low as a paradigm of healthy diabetes living. And he's a type 1 diabetic um, and certainly we've taken that um, beyond Bernstein. We've started moving forward, but he set the stage. He is the uh, um, original guy that started this and all props to Dr. Richard Bernstein. Um, one of the interesting things that he spoke about, and I thought about this, but never put it quite into context. And this is beyond anybody with diabetes, anybody with insulin resistance. This is so important. And here's where it's important. What we're talking about today is inflammation, joint inflammation, tendon inflammation, fibromyalgia, whatever you want to call it. And uh, Dr. Bernstein alludes to something very interesting, that most of our joints, all the capsules, all the joints, uh, if you look at muscles, they've got ligaments and tendons, and then the joints have this fibrous capsule. In fact, if you look at the liver, the framework of the liver is a fibrous capsule. And all of that is made by collagen. And collagen is a super, super long-lasting protein. So it's made of amino acids, and then they cross-link, uh, for example, in 1,4 cross-links, uh, special biochemical links to form scaffolds, to form structures, to form tendons, to form capsules, to form organ structure. And the entire human body is basically built on this fine network or this fine skeletal structure. We all know our skeleton, our bones, but we don't understand is this fine collagen matrix that supports every aspect of the human body, the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, the muscles, all the tissues, every organ in the human body. And as I said, collagen is made of amino acids. And one of the incredible things about collagen is that it is highly, highly, highly susceptible to interstitial inflammation. In other words, when you look at inflammation, inflammation can occur in any compartment of the human body. And the first place that we see inflammation is in the intestine, then in the blood vascular space, then in the space between the blood vessels and the cells, and then in the cells. And in this particular video, we're talking about interstitial interstitial inflammation, which is inflammation outside of the cells, outside of the bloodstream within the human body. And what lives there? What lives there is interstitial fluid. You know, in the morning or in the evening when you go, go to bed, sometimes your ankles are a little bit swollen. That's fluid that accumulates. We're going to talk about that in a second. And then we're talking about the collagen infrastructure that is part of um, uh, the skeleton that is not bone. And well, let's go down the pathway and talk about the fluid. One of the things that happens in the human body when you eat a lot of sugar, sugar is very hygroscopic. It sucks up water. And then that sugar goes out of the bloodstream into the interstitial space as it crosses from the bloodstream into your cells. And then in the cells, that sugar is used as glucose for energy. It can be stored in the muscles and the liver mostly for glycogen as a low, glycogen is just a low water containing form of sugar readily available, or in certain cells, the fat cells, the liver cells, it can be turned into fat. That's what happens to sugar. Now, sugar is like a sponge. It sucks up a lot of water. So every compartment that sugar, that sugar goes into, it sucks up that water. And in, in the interstitial space, as that sugar crosses, it sucks up that water. And then when the sugar gets used up, when it gets spent or stored or 
as glycogen or change to fat, now you're left with all this excess water. And if you do not have adequate uh, salt in your bloodstream, if you do not have the ability to suck that fluid back into your bloodstream and pee it out, that interstitial fluid builds up in every organ. And because it's of gravity, we often see it in our ankles. But when we wake up in the morning, it's in our lower back. But every organ is slightly swollen. If you think about this, after a high-carbohydrate meal at lunchtime, the worst time of the day for, uh, um, uh, uh, for work productivity is the couple of hours after lunch. Why? Because the brain, which is in a closed box, has this concussive effect, the swelling. That's what concussion is. The swelling inside the cells, but also between the cells. And that swelling puts pressure on the brain cells, and they don't function that well. That concuff concussive episode is that interstitial fluid. And then we pee out that fluid and we may get rid of it or we retain it and we have this swelling which now affects our blood pressure and our, our uh, uh, blood volume and our overall weight of that fluid collection. So that's one thing that sugar does in the interstitial space as an inflammatory uh, fluid space occupier. However, this is what Richard Bernstein talks about and it's so interesting and just so simple and yet so true. When that sugar crosses that interstitial space, the concentration in the interstitial space reflects very similarly the concentration in the bloodstream. Think about this. When you wear a CGM, a, I don't have mine on me right now, but when you use a continuous glucose monitor, that's exactly what it's monitoring. It's monitoring interstitial uh, sugar concentration which directly reflects of your vascular, your blood vessel, your blood glucose, and that's how that you, can, you can use a CGM. And if those sugars are chronically elevated in the interstitial space, nobody really thinks about this. It damages, first we've got the fluid shifts, which we just talked about. And I talked about the brain, but it can damage every organ out there or swell every organ. But the other thing that it does, that sugar attaches to collagen. That sugar attaches to collagen and it attaches permanently to the collagen and it disrupts, it disfigures collagen. It creates an inflammatory response in the collagen and then sometimes that chronic inflammatory response gets reacted to by calcium deposition. A tiny little micro bones, bone spurs happening in that collagen. And that collagen gets damaged in every joint, in every organ. So the liver scaffolding gets damaged. What do we call that? Fatty liver. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Not just inflammation inside the liver cells, but in inflammation in the cellular structure. And when your liver uh, uh, converts to, being, to developing fibrosis and then cirrhosis, that's what you see when you look under the microscope. You can actually do a trichrome stain. You can stain for the collagen and you see these thick layers of collagen, this very ugly disrupted collagen in the liver. That's what we look at when we biopsy the liver. But in every joint, in every capsule, in every tendon, in every ligament, the same glycosylation is happening. This inflammatory, chronic inflammatory reaction. And if you ask anybody with, di with <laughs> poorly controlled diabetes, they'll tell you, my God, my shoulders are stiff. Sometimes they can't even comb their, comb their hair or they can't even... Uh, uh, get back behind them like this because their shoulder is stiff and disrupted. If you look at Dupuytren's contractures, the tendons, it starts with the fourth tendon of the fourth finger, but all of these tendons contract up. There's an advertisement now because, of course, there's a medication for it with John Elway talking about his Dupuytren's contractures. But that's glycosylation and trauma. But in... in a lot of people with insulin resistance, that is glycosylation, that is glucose that's attaching and causing that inflammation. Plantar fasciitis, glucose-related inflammation of the tendons of your foot that give your foot the adequate spring and structure. It happens in every organ, and it's related to interstitial hyperglycemia. Think about that, folks. Think about that. And there are certain simple, simple remedies that can break that sugar down. 
that can dissolve that sugar and get rid of this problem. It doesn't require surgery. It doesn't require all these high-end um, orthopedic procedures. But that's what we do. We get steroid injections to reduce the inflammation, and then we get surgery. Does it work? Yeah, but it's so destructive to those same tissues. However, you can have all the steroid injections you want to. You can have all the surgeries you want to. It is not going to get better until you control your blood sugar. And how do you control your blood sugar? Get rid of your insulin resistance. How do you do that? You get rid of carbohydrates in your diet. And for a while, if you have to, you may have to manage your blood sugar with insulins or medications that lower your liver's production of sugar and lowers your blood sugar. That's diabetes, folks. So all of that sugar accumulating in your tendons and in your bones and in your joints and in every organ in the human body is related to glycosylation of collagen, something nobody's talking about. And there are strategies, there are medications you can take to dissolve that. Now, everybody on the internet is going to be out there selling you, pitching you something. Take this drug, it's a magic drug. It doesn't work that way. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You know why? Because Richard Bernstein shared it with me. Richard Bernstein shared it with me, and I'm going to encourage you to go to his website, to go to his look, to go to his stuff, and see what the answer is. See what the answer is. <laughs> and if you know, in the comment section below this video, drop me a line. But that is interstitial inflammation caused by fluid and caused by glycosylation, sugar attacking the joints. Of course, if you're an athlete, if you're a baseball pitcher or basketball, you can cause trauma to those same things, to those same collagen fibers. But by far the commonest cause is a high glucose diet and insulin resistance and probably playing a huge role in which athletes get the same injuries. Think that through, folks. This is about inflammation. It's the first of a four-part discussion of inflammation. Think about it, and if you're troubled by it, look up Richard Bernstein, look up his books, look up his work, go to the Low Carb All Stars Lecture, Richard Bernstein's lecture, and he will give you the answer. I'm not going to give it to you. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If you like our content, drop a couple of dollars at PayPal, robert at jackschildren.com. That's our PayPal account. It's a charitable organization called New, New Era Diabetes Solutions. So I'm not benefiting from this. It helps to pay for the videos. I'll see you next time.